My name is John, son of Zebedee. When my brother James and I first became apostles, Jesus called us the sons of thunder because we were easily angered and full of bluster. I remember early in our ministry, we found some strangers driving out demons in the name of Jesus. We were indignant. Master, we saw a man driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he's not one of us. And I remember Jesus calmly replied, Whoever is not against you is for you. Oh yes, of course. A little while later, we were about to go through a village on our way to Jerusalem. The town leader sent word that we were not welcome there. Lord, do you want us to call down fire on their heads, we shouted. Jesus, again in his usual calm manner, said the Son of Man has come to save, not to destroy. Oh yes, of course. So now you can see how we became known as the Sons of Thunder. It's hard to imagine that after all these years I am now known as the Apostle of Love. I suppose it only goes to show you that love is a behavior you learn and not just an emotion that you feel. As I see it, love stands on two legs. If you remove either leg, love will not stand. The first leg is trust. I learned that if there is no trust in a relationship, there is no love. Oddly, I learned about this on a rowboat on the Sea of Galilee. We had just left, left Jesus behind to mourn the death of his cousin John the Baptist. When a storm suddenly came up, during the storm Jesus caught up to us, but he wasn't in a boat. He was walking on the water. Well, as you might suspect, we were all terrified, both by the storm and by the person walking on the waves. Some of us thought it was a ghost, but Jesus calmed our fears when he spoke to us. Well, I suppose you're going to ask, what do storms and rowboats have to do with love? Well, it was a loudmouth named Peter who taught me about love that day. When Peter confirmed that it was Jesus out there walking on the water, he asked Jesus, Can I come to you? Jesus agreed, and Peter stepped out in the boat and began to walk on the water. Well, when most people think of this story, they remember how Peter began to sink when he doubted. But I remember that Peter was the only apostle that trusted Jesus in the boat that day. Trust is one of the legs that love stands on, and Peter was definitely strong in trust. He was an example for all of us. The other leg that love stands on is sacrifice. Oddly, my role model for sacrifice was a tax collector named Matthew. Now, I don't know how much you know about tax collectors in Israel that day, but I can tell you they were extremely wealthy. And when Matthew decided to follow Jesus, he gave up everything. The more of this world you let go, the tighter your grip is on the Lord. Matthew taught me that, and none loved Jesus more than Matthew, because none surrendered more than him to follow him. So there you have it, a lesson on love from the Apostle of Love, and now you know the truth. I got my reputation for love for copying the example of two other people. But that was before I found an even greater example of love in the person of Jesus himself. He was the ultimate example of love, standing on a foundation of trust and sacrifice. No human being has ever trusted the Father more. Another, none has ever sacrificed more for love than Jesus himself. We have invested in the bank. Put it in some bonds. Some old bonds. Uh, you're home early. Hey, I thought you didn't get off work till 8.30. They let me go. You got fired? For what? They said I left the register without a relief. Was that a rule? Yeah, the owner's son doesn't do his job when I'm there because he's distracted. Oh, so they fired you to save their son's job? Oh, nice people. Hey, why don't you get a job at the hospital? Maybe turn your internship into a paying job. That's an idea. Dinah, honey, everybody loses a job at some point in their life. It's just a job. You know, it's one thing after another for that girl. <sighs> it's good she's out of that store. The owner's son kept pestering her all the time, so she said anyway. She never told me that. She said it was hard for her to do her work because he was always talking to her, but... That's what I'm talking about. Do you think she'll ever come out of her shell? Uh, eventually. This might cause a delay in the process for now. That's what I'm afraid of. Dinah! Are you going out tonight? Yes, Daddy. Oh, going bowling with Wes and Melinda? No. Oh, so where are the three of you headed tonight? Nowhere, Daddy. I'm not going out with them tonight. Oh, so who are you going out with, honey? Kyle from the store. 
You mean that Chaldean boy whose family owns a market who, by the way, lets you go for no good reason? Yeah. You're going on a date with this boy? His name is Kyle Daddy, and it's not a date. So where is this Kyle guy taking you? Found his alley. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the abundance of food that you provided, for the ability to work, to pay for the food. And we just pray that it be nourishment to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, Dinah, any big plans for this weekend? Oh, yeah, and don't forget the auction is this Saturday. Oh, I didn't forget. On Friday, we're all going to go bowling when Wes and Kyle get out of work. Oh, I'm glad to see Wes and Melinda. And is uh, Kyle going to the auction? No, he can't. He already has plans with his friends instead. Mm-hmm. So what's on the agenda for today? Oh, nothing much till later. Your father's got a wedding to set up for at 1 o'clock. Oh, yeah, that's right. Another wedding. Great. Don't forget, Diane, I know Kyle tomorrow at church means no dating. What, Dad? He's already got work tomorrow. That's not fair. I don't get it, Diana. What do you see in this young man? You two just don't understand. Honey, make us and lower your voice. Well, he makes me feel special, like I'm the princess and he's my prince. I know he's been in trouble and he's kind of a player, but he really likes me. If you think he likes you for being you, you're still a naive little girl. Diana? Yeah, yeah. Now this is how it's going to be. I will allow you to continue to see this young man if he comes to church on a regular basis. And only if he comes to church with us on a regular basis. And if he doesn't continue to come, I will not allow you to continue to see him. And further, there will be no courting or anything serious until I see some spiritual growth in both of you, especially him. Now, if you two can abide by these rules, you can abide by these rules. I want to make myself today. Now, going behind your mother and I's back for I don't know how long now about dating this For a period of one month, I will only allow you to see him in church or in this house. Do I further make myself clear? No, why? Because, Dinah, he's no good. He's trouble. I just don't trust him. Trust me on this. Whatever happened to love the person he just been? Dinah, I just don't think this is the type of relationship you really want to be having. You should be courting young men from the church. Young men that are going somewhere that have a future. Young men that want to serve the Lord and not just serve money. You can't serve the Lord and money, Dinah. You know that. I know that. Look, I'm just trying to keep you from getting hurt and going down a simple path. I know. I understand that. But Kyle has never been shown the way. I think you're wrong. Anyone can change in their simple ways. Can you believe her? Honey, is this really about Kyle or is this more about you losing your Carrie, this is about what's going to happen three to five years down the road when they start wanting the kids to go through Catholicism and do the, the rituals. Carrie, the divorce rate's like 50% now, but it's 25% for born-again Christians. They hardly stand a chance starting out. If you're worried about getting divorced, that's out of the question because Catholics don't even believe in divorce. You're not helping. Oh, Jeff, come on. She's 20 years old. We've got to let her go sometime. She was almost married to Jeremy, and now that we've had her home a year longer, you don't want to let her go? Honey, it's time for another man to protect, care, and love for our daughter. It's time to let her fly. Let her go. What is She's stronger this time. We don't have to be there to catch her. What are you saying? I should just surrender her to live a life, a missionary life spent trying to convert her husband? Yes. I don't think so. Yes, no. it's her life. We did it with her and Jeremy. But Jeremy was in the faith and he was a decent young man. Kyle seems nice too. He's got a good job. I understand it's the religion aspect that you've got such a problem with. Not that he's in love with our daughter. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hi, I'm Dan. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Bobby. Good. Nice day, huh? Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, so you out here by yourself? Or? Yeah, um, I'm waiting for Jesus. I don't want to miss him. He'll be back soon. Is your boyfriend yeah. Jesus, or are you talking about no. the Jesus? The Jesus. He's coming back. The and Jesus Christ, right? Yeah, you, you waiting for him too? Well, kind of. I mean, I'm a Christian, but um, 
I'm not like waiting for him here right now today. You, you, you think you think he's coming back here today, right now? Yeah, today, according to uh, some ancient prophecy, he has some nasal somebody or you know the calendar I saw. Yeah, I oh, calculated. like the Aztec calendar or not yeah, the or something. Yeah, it's supposed to happen yeah. right here. You know, would you mind if I shared something with you? Sure. Okay. But to the scripture, he's not coming back in any hour that we're going to know about or any place that we're going to know about. And it actually kind of warns against listening to people that, that tell you that. Okay. Uh, in Matthew uh, 24, 23 to 51, it says, At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect if it were possible. See, I've told you ahead of time, so if anyone tells you there he is in the desert or on the lake or whatever, you know, um, to go out, there he is in the inner room, do not believe it. For as lightning comes from the east, is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Well, but how will we know when he comes? How will we well, be let ready? Let me read on. Hold on. There, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the sun will f f fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Suppose the servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is taking a long time. And he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant... you got to go somewhere? I'm no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I just met you. I'm just messing with you. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And in an hour when he is not aware of. He will put... He will cut him into peace and assign him... With the hypocrites, he'll cut them in pieces and send them with the hypocrites when there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want to be part of that group. Cutting the pieces and weeping and gnashing of teeth, you know. But anyway, my, my, my point is, uh, you don't know me, I don't know you, but, you know, it's, it's been a blessing to meet you. I hope I didn't come on too strong, but, you know, so many people, are, they're trying to make a, I don't know, a, a system out of God and what he's going to do and when he's going to come back and... But he wants a relationship. If you know him and you're doing what he wants in, in your life, you know, you could. it doesn't matter where you're at or what you're doing. As long as you're doing his will, he's going to find you because his love is strong. You know what I mean? And he cares about his own. So isn't that awesome? Yeah, I don't want to miss him, though. You want to pray? Okay. All right, let's pray. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray for Jody and anybody else that knows you, Lord, or wants to know you, Lord, that they would realize that it's just a daily thing and you love us so much, Father. And that if we, if we love you and we're doing your will and your work, we don't have to worry, Lord. You're not going to leave your people, Lord. You're coming back for your own, Father. And we pray for anybody that doesn't know you now, that they wouldn't worry about calendars or, or uh, prophets that are dead and gone, Lord, but they would listen to you, the, the King of all prophets, Lord, the King of glory. And that you said that no one knows the day or the hour but the Father, and that we should be busy about doing your work, Lord, and not to get caught up in a lot of different things, but just to be... Ready and waiting for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ebenezer Scrooge, coming and who we better? I am the spirit of Christmas present. Coming and who we better? Did I say that? You did. I am the spirit of Christmas present, and this is the night before the dawn, before the day of Christmas. No, I'm telling you that I'm the spirit of Christmas present. You did. Come in and go with each other. You're a glass of mind spirit, aren't you? No, I'm a large of mind and spirit. My mind is filled with the hearing now, and the now is Christmas. I don't think I've ever met someone quite like you before.